it is everybody's wish to live without a disability. But we come across unfortunate situations where medical conditions can twist and turn your life. Welcome to yet another exciting edition of Proudly Able, a program that brings to you inspiring stories of persons with disabilities. My name is Rati Chairi, and today we are in Chitungwiza Unity F, where we are being inspired by Blessing Kudzainya Makao. Let's sit back, relax, and get inspired. <laughs> Uh, my name is Blessing Yamakaro. Uh, I wasn't born with a disability. Um, I was born as a normal baby. I was creative and energetic, athletic as well. It was up until um, I think it was Form 1 that I uh, started uh, having um, health problems. Then from then on, um, it was hospital visits, doctor's visits. Um, I had problems with my leg. First uh, operation was in Form 3. I, I had to have two plates in my both legs. And then um, I had a second one after school. Um, there was, I think, um, after all level. Then um, life took its course. Then um, the disability came through um, illness. And um, since that time, uh, I use crutches for mobility. My brother is one person who, who has never been stopped by, by what people can call a disability. He has always been into sport and he has been able to inspire everyone else to, to pursue what they do. Since preschool, uh, as I said, I was uh, very energetic and creative. Um, some may call it naughty, but I would like to call it you know, um, creative and energetic as well. I started um, athletics in preschool and I used to even compete with uh, other preschools. I remember on my report card, I didn't want to do the necessary times that we were taught, but I always wanted to create my own stories and tell my own stories in my own way. And I went through into primary school, played um, different sports from athletics, uh, volleyball, soccer, rugby, and um, through to secondary school, that's where you know, um, I had problems with my health. And um, from then onwards, I became more involved in the performance side and artistic side. So I chose to be in the music department more. And that's where I think my artistic and creative side was groomed more. He was, he was like the family's biggest athlete. He used to run a lot. He used to play a lot of rugby. I don't think there was any sport that he couldn't play. Like even when you look at some of his high school pictures, he had like a lot of tags on his, on his blazer. Blessing Kudzai's disability was devastating to his family but they did not lose hope as they gave him all the support he needed. My family took it um, hard, uh, I think, as it was a, a big change to them as well. I think it, it, it really hit them hard as well, but they took it you know, one step at a time and they gave me the support um, that was best needed for me to actually keep moving on with life, um, especially my mother. Um, and grandmother. And then to have all of that stop, um, I'm sure it was devastating. I was pretty young, so I wasn't sure how he took it. But as a family, I'm really grateful for, for my parents and particularly my mom. She was able to support and encourage any sporting activity and any artistic uh, form of expression that any one of her children would, would, would want to do. After becoming disabled, Kudzai shifted from the energetic athlete he was to become an arts and sport mentor. Uh, the journey of mentoring and teaching started then, um, but for me, I was learning more things and trying to balance out uh, myself as a human being. But um, since then, it's just been helping and helping more kids. I never doubted him. We worked for about four or five months, that's when I came to, to realize that he had a disability. But I was so amazed that he had a disability, yet he knew much. As 
still remember I think it was after my first um, ah, no, my second surgery um, I was still healing and trying to figure out um, how life would um, go and uh, I met my one of my friends uh, called Eugene and I uh, started helping out him out with his music and managing him and so from then onwards I had a decision to make uh, keep moving on with life and learning more and I picked up uh, more things from then onwards trying to learn and evolve as a as, as an individual. I remember back then all I wanted to do was dance only dance but when I met with him he was like um, well conversation but for now we are going to teach you poetry so for me is um, one person who has taught me that anyone can be anything Blessing Kudzai had a passion for sport and could not fulfill his dream due to his disability but he has not given up as he is now coaching youngsters in his community. The more I started venturing into more different things, uh, more kids also started coming through. Kudzu was able to not only like uh, get into coaching but also into creating platforms for other young people, both able and both disabled to be able to do great things. It was traumatizing for Blessing, waking up to not being able to do what he was used to. Thanks to his supportive family, that encouraged him to face the new life of being differently able. We are taking a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our second segment of Proudly Able, where we are still talking to Kudzi, who has managed to turn his weaknesses into strength by taking a stance of coaching other youths to be what he could have been. I was doing it to try and uh, motivate myself and find a uh, direction. So I started with uh, b-boying, um, which is uh, normally called break dance here in Zimbabwe. And from then onwards, um, uh, uh, we, I created a crew um, and started performing with them. And from then onwards, I went on to poetry and then emceeing um, more people. They became totems of eyelids whispered, journeys of silence that neither time nor his story painted. I actually managed to write even my, my own book, it's coming out soon, um, because of Nkoma Kudzi. The lyrical rhythm of an ancient artist's guitar, love is sublime, discorded at the first scripture. Shaped in emotional blindness, we harness the gleam of every hand that tilt relapses as it grows. We are used to it like a story we told, but when those hourglasses resuscitate, we are professionals. From the uh I started coaching and teaching, mentoring um, in acrobatics as well. I think up until a time, then we were still in the streets and in where they call the green glasses. Um, then I met there was uh, Coach Rodi, who was a gymnastics coach. So he, he came, he came, and um, I think that was my first professional. Um, qualification that I had, he told me that I should come in and I then went for gymnastics um, courses. Uh, that's where my journey in professional sports started. Coach Kudza is very intelligent. He has his own ways of doing things. He is more like a mentor to me. I am inspired, inspired but yet, yet he has a disability. Looking at the fact that he has a special need, it's, it's something that the outside community brings to our, to our attention, but when we spent time with him and when he was teaching us growing up, it's something that we didn't even see or notice. 
He's the funniest guy you can ever meet. Blessing Kudza is a talented multi-sport coach who has impacted the youth in his community by training them in different sporting courts. I'm a multi-sport coach. I coach the different um, sports courts that are there. Uh, we're really big on sports. I think I really credit him for, for, for that thing. And um, I think he's going to do more and more great things with the community and with whoever's willing to work with him. He has really inspired me to do a lot of things personally. I remember this one time when I was in primary school. I was in school and, they, and then it was a sports day and then they said we want to you know, put people in their respective sports. So I wasn't really good at 100 meter sprints. Um, I was fast but I, I, I wasn't as, as good as the other kids. So I decided to get into hurdles, like the, the ones where you run and then you jump these weird obstacles. So and then I came back home and then I told him like, um, I told him that um, I want to get into the hurdles. Um, I, I remember, I think he sat me down for like 15 minutes and then he drew the hurdles and then he taught me how to sprint and how to actually jump over them. It was, it was such a short space of time because I had came back for lunch and then I went back and then I qualified. I created methods um, to use so because I don't demonstrate them I have a method that I use and that method um, is also in a way that I communicate with the athlete. Sometimes people try to judge the physical appearance of a person without understanding his capabilities. But for Kudzai, he has stayed focused. It's not easy um, trying to coach someone who doesn't understand. Um, you are, I've had many instances where I meet people, but they first judge. Always I have to try to be positive and try to just put that aside. Kudzai has devised methods he uses for training so that he is understood better and not to look at his disability. I make them understand that I understand them more even if they, I have a disability that I have and in that way um, it eases you know, um, the relationship between me as a coach and athlete. Despite facing a lot of challenges in moving from one place to another, during the training sessions, Kudzai does not give up on his work he loves most. Some of the challenges, um, especially, um, is moving from, from place to place. Um, like in a normal day, um, we can have four practices that we need to do. We can maybe go for the pool session I have to travel there um, and then we come back, um, go to the gym, I have to also travel there and um, mostly as well it's the facilities that we use as well are not um, quite uh, like mostly very accessible so I think yeah um, when it comes to um, where I go for courses or competitions as well um, it's I think it's just the attitude of people sometimes um, is that those are I think some of the challenges that are there but in a bid to fulfill his vision in arts and sport Blessing Kudzai formed an organization called Mozi the Seed to train the youth in dance, music and poetry. Mozi um, idea came about uh, I think it was 2006. Yeah, 2006. Um, it came as an idea, but it really came into play in 2011. Um, so Mozi, um, in English, is a seed. So the idea was from a seed, um, seed are planted, and from seeds come 
um, products that are the talents that we have in the different people. Dino and then when I get to Nikamba, but he as soon as I see Mandi, and then when I want to know when I get to Tamba and Chukuna gets go. Then after that, Jakma form four, Dopanazo Sangana Nam Koma Blessing. Um, that will introduce Nam Koma Blessing. When I just speak of an artist, ah, Domun Wachi ran good to this at the end, so she goes on any disability and gone now. Then after that, when I got ah, and wait houses when I go introduce Okunok. Then he a number of youngsters are benefiting from blessings programs the numbers are we can just take classes or workshops so it's not as in we have a exact number of people that we have and also um, we have workshops in communities and normally like someone can just come for a for a day it's normally we mentor coach and kid teach um, kids, um, youth, um, just uh, it's more of community development and, and youth development and we try to cater for anyone, not only the talented but anyone who feels that they have something that they want to learn and are able to do. Being disabled is not the end of the world but visions can still be achieved. We're taking a short break, stay tuned. Welcome back to our third and final segment of Proudly Able. Judging a book by its cover is one of the practices that are done by our societies to persons with disabilities. But Kuzi has proven the society wrong by his great works. Sometimes it's just try um, knowing their story and where they're coming from that you may understand and you know even change um, the way you think. He's able to, 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 to form a relationship with you in that moment and be able to coach you and, and to bring out the best in you. So um, I credit most of my my um, resilience and most of my creativity and, uh, and endurance really when it comes to art. I'm also into into art now. I'm not into sport anymore. And he's always encouraging. He, he literally goes out of his way to make sure that he finds you people who are in that trade and then you that you progress. Um, so yeah, to me, he's, um, he's not only my older brother, but he's a legend in my life. For the past three years, I've been working with him as my coach. I have noted that disability does not mean inability. He can do everything, yet he has a disability. He's like any other, and he, he is even better than most of the guys who don't have disabilities. The way he thinks, the way he sees life, and he's perspectives over things is, is just incredible. Disability does not mean inability. Um, it's that, you know, looking at uh, the journey with Mukoma Respect and Mukoma Kuzi, right? Um, I am someone <laughs> who, if society looks at, you, know, you think ah, he's able, right? But I wasn't going to be able if it wasn't for him. Look at the way that he's brought me up. You know, he used to just say, go to corporate meetings, go to this, go to that. You know, coming from a background where we don't even speak English, go in an environment that you can speak in, go to and do this, go and do that. The faith that he had in me, that brought the me that I am today. Envy acknowledge, but once professional, that tone is lit off, no more sweet tones like, baby, please don't break down on me. All you want to break is up. Now, why? Because you now know, know nothing at all about the love that we have as spirit lifted and seated into an atmosphere of understanding. Once land, I could grab it with my own hand, says the palms of the only man who can change this love within a state. Yeah, Pana Zawuri, Chicha Ongaiti, those are the words you know, that have been said. And people close to relatives, um, 
they say things are uh, behind your back um I'm going to ma 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 zwi an go kandwa but you know zinzo kuti has no words in ndoko kuridzira kune vano kuti musaji yaje kana mwana munhu cuz ningo sina dzikwi sezvo zviri mari cuz a fan like me ndi tena mberi ndi kutaramba nchi to dzidza zvinhu zvakawanda like poetry and we did pana pa kumodza tingo ite dance yet nita zvinhu zvakawanda zvina poetry music saka ndoko kuridzira kune vano kuti can only tell him to go to Mashuri. Like what no one needs disability, more respect. Because he never knows what he needs. He tells him right now. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, um, I, I don't live for people. Um, I'm trying to really, you know, forge your way forward and try to move forward. So, as much as it's painful, I have to, you know, just try and regroup and continue and just say, you know, and run people always be people at times so to the society you know um that's what i'm saying you should at least you know try to understand um what you know how painful it can be to you know the next person now i'm studying at the university of zimbabwe i am doing i'm pursuing my degree in industrial sociology but as far as i I like sociology. Coach Kuzai, my mentor, is the one who, who inspired me to love sociology. Above all, above what I can do, I always respect him and I never judge. Sometimes when I am low or whenever I need advice, I turn to him. I doesn't, it doesn't count that he has a disability. To me, he's, he's someone who I can count on. And, I can say to other people that judging a disability is not always necessary. He's someone I'm proud to call a mentor. Why? Because he leads in theory and also practically in deed. Um, they became totems of eyelids whispered, genes of silence that neither time nor history painted. What can the ears grasp? Um, anyone who has a disability, um, I just want to say never give up. You know, um, try as much as possible to always look forward and just keep going. You know, um, try to find um, all the positiveness that you you can, regardless of what what what's going on. on. Um, I'm inspired by um, Casey Gordon, Minister of Sport. Um, why? Um, she managed to you know, reach a, a level, peak level, um, even coming from Africa, world level, and uh, I think she understands sport more in a way that I also want to understand as I'm also coaching. <laughs> One place um, I always love. Um, it brings out um, the you no know, creative side. Um, especially, I love writing. Um, so you know, meditative uh, man, just you know, being myself and feeling refreshed. Um, that's why Nyanga is um, the place that I love. Um, even the scenery as well, our uh, views. Um, that's that brings out, you know, um, a better energy in me. So, yeah, Nyanga is one place that I love. Implementation of his dreams into reality has managed to take away the youth in his community from drug and substance abuse. With that, we have come to the end of this exciting edition of Proudly Able. Hope you've been inspired by Blessing Kudzai Makao's story. If you've got a story that you'd like to share with us, please feel free to get in touch with our producers on 0717-459292. And don't forget to like our Facebook page, Proudly Able Zim, and our YouTube channel, Proudly Able Zim. From me, Ratizom Chairi, your host, Blessing, and the crew behind the scenes. Goodbye.